The day was warm and as the local train made its way down the tracks people waved to the engineer who blew his horn once in a while just to say hello. It was a normal train with everything from Petro to people on it. The journey was a long one of about 500 miles, but the tracks were well kept and he had been an engineer for over 10 years with no problem. It was going to be a good day. Dan was on his way to the train station. It was his normal way that he traveled to work. He had worked at the same firm for over five years and had all his paperwork with him. It seemed that no matter what he was always late and as he hurried to open his car he dropped his keys down the sewer drain. This meant that he had to go back into the house to get his extra set of keys making him even later. Carrie was all excited. She was taking her six-year-old into the city for the first time. Levi was so excited. He had never been into the large city and they were going to be spending the night at one of the hotels. As he rummaged through his things he made sure that he had his charger for his games. They were more important to him than the clothes that his mother was busy packing. Joe had been the conductor on this same train for over 10 years. This was a quiet train with mostly businessmen on their way to work making up most of the customer list. He knew some of them personally. It was a good ride and as he watched the customers embark he smiled and checked their tickets. He looked up at the sky and smiled this was a warm spring day, a good day. Eva had been on the train since the last stop and smiled as the new passengers entered the cabin. She watched as the little boy climbed excitedly into his seat. She was sure that the lady next to him was his mother. Fortunately for everyone the train was not full on this Friday morning. This was a holiday weekend and many were taking advantage of the three days off by taking an extra day. As the train squealed and pulled the large train from the station Eva smiled leaned back and relaxed. Each one of the cars passed the pastures of the farms that lined either side of the tracks with the loud rattle that the train made as it traveled down the way. Everything was peaceful until the sound of the brakes being engaged and a hard stop occurred. Everyone on the train looked around and called out to make sure that no one was hurt. Thankfully everyone was shaken up but unharmed. Joe immediately got onto his train phone and contacted the engineer. There would be a slight delay but everything was going to be alright. Carrie held onto her son Levi and relaxed as she saw a new man enter the car. Simon was a good man who had dealt with many near tragedies through the years. He had seen much worse near derailments and knew that the train would be on its way soon. He walked up to each passenger introduced himself and did his best to make them feel comfortable. He assured them that he would stay on the train with them until they reached their destination. After about an hour the train made a loud groan and it started once more down the tracks. But, the weather had changed. It was strange but there seemed to be a strange yellow color to the sky and although there seemed to be no wind the trees were swaying as if in a breeze. Levi was the first to notice that the train was very quiet. You could no longer hear the sounds of the train as it went down the tracks. It had been a soothing sound to him and the lack of the sound made him a little nervous. He looked up to Simon and with a smile Simon took his hand. Carrie had just turned around for a second and all of a sudden couldn't find her little boy. Simon stood there quietly and told her not to worry he would go and look for her son. But, then without warning there was a sudden jerk of the train. The jerk only lasted a few seconds and the train continued its trip. The trip seemed to be taking a little longer than usual however, and Joe was beginning to wonder what was happening. Cal if his intuition or whatever but it seemed that things were not quite right. The scenery was the same but he had not seen one single person something rare, and they had not picked up any new passengers at the last stop. As long as Joe had worked the schedule that had never happened before. Dan was getting annoyed. His cell phone hadn't worked since the initial incident. And now his watch had stopped. It seemed as though they were traveling towards the right station but there were no people, no animals, and no odor. The sound was very soft and he was wondering what was going on. Where was the lady's little boy? Simon had a job to do. It was his job to make sure that everyone felt comfortable on this journey. He had listened to all their fears and done his best to quell their worries. Each one had a journey to go on and each would have to deal with their lives separately. 
Mary had been on her way to work when she had stopped at the railroad tracks to allow the train to pass. Usually she tried to avoid that train, as it was irregular. But, she had been late that morning. It was a day that she would never forget. As she and other people waited for the train to pass she heard what sounded like a pop. As the looked over at the train she watched the train cars go back and forth. All of a sudden she realized that the train was going to lose some of the cars. With the noise of a thunderstorm and the fires from hell the cars piled up. Mary didn't know it but a man had tried to beat the train but had not. As the train had attempted to stop one of the cars left the track leading to a domino effect causing four cars filled with people to burst into flames. Mary and everyone around her went running towards the train. The wreckage and the fires made it hard but she could see people coming out of some of the cars. Many were burned and some had other injuries. The ambulances came and the work of trying to save those trapped in the massive metal that was so hot that it glowed. She and many others helped the injured to safety. But, on that morning Mike had been on his way to work as an EMT when he had heard the explosion and seen the flames from the train wreck. He had jumped into his car and headed down to the fire station at lightning speed. As he arrived at the scene he and his partner DJ went right to work. There were about 50 people injured with a vast variance in the degree of their injuries. There were those who appeared to be dazed and those whose injuries were life-threatening. Each and every one of the patients had to be exceeded individually. Eva glanced down at her watch one more time. It had seemed to be going very slowly the last time she had checked it. She shook her wrist hoping that the battery was just low and that it could be replaced quite easily. But, what was taking this train so long? She was sure that they should be at her destination by now. Why was she having so much trouble hearing the other passengers now? Simon walked over to Eva and smiled. Take my hand he told her. Eva took his hand and quickly disappeared before everyone on the train's shock. Now there was no question in anyone's mind on that train that morning that something was happening. The watch is not working, the lack of some of their senses and the strange glow that now seemed to be hovering over their car could no longer be ignored. Eva found herself in a strange room. She turned towards the door that she had just exited but it was gone. At the desk sat a young man who smiled at her. Take a seat. Eva took a seat and was amazed that he had in front of him almost every aspect of her life. You will need to do penitence for some of your actions Miss Eva what to do he thought. I know you are a great teacher, so I will have you work with the children who died too soon. You will teach them every day for the next 200 years. This was hardly a punishment for Eva she had always loved working with children and smiled as she left the room to start her new journey. Dan Carey and Joe turned their heads towards Simon and waited for some kind of explanation. Every time that Simon had done this. Oh how many trips had he made? Hundreds of thousands he didn't know for sure. You see Simon was what the angels called a working angel. He had not been a bad man when he had been alive, but because of his negligence two people had died. His penitence was to spend the next 500 years bringing souls to their destination. Sometimes passengers were not prepared as well as others. This was going to be a hard ride. None of these passengers had expected to die on this morning. But, they were approaching the station where each of the three remaining passengers would learn their fate and so he sat down and started to tell his story. Dan Carey and Joe and watched the strange man as he took a seat in front of them and waited. Joe looked them directly in the eye and said I am what is called a soul escort. When people die in an accident of this sort I come onto the vehicle that they had been in and help them deal with the fears and questions of what had happened to them. You were not in a slight accident you were in a major accident in which you did not survive. The strange glow that you all see is the train car that you were in burning. Everyone just took a breath. Carrie was the first to ask Levi what happened to him. He isn't here. Simon knew that losing a child was one of the hardest things a parent had to face and took her hands. All children go to heaven Carrie. He is with your mother now. He is adjusting to his new life. I see that you have not been a good girl sometimes, oh there are a few exceptions, 
but you have been unkind to people. What to do he looked at her and watched her intently. The tears began to fall down her cheek as she asked. Will I see him again? Simon walked Carrie over to the outside door and asked her to walk out through the fog. Carrie walked and just a few steps later was met by a handsome young man. Hello Carrie my name is Arthur and I am here to offer you a wonderful eternity. You have been a good person a good mother and have done nothing to deserve anything but the best. Now, she knew that she had not been an angel and was surprised by the offer. As Arthur walked towards the gate he said that she would need to pay penitence. Her penitence would be that she would not be able to see Levi for 100 years. She would live in a castle-like home, but she would not see her son. Without hesitance Carrie said no thank you and continued down the path, shortly after she arrived at another gate where Carrie, Michael met her. Michael was a good-looking young man who smiled and said Levi has been waiting for you. With that she looked and saw her mom and Levi. Dot Dan had watched as Carrie had gone through the door never to be seen again. She had looked happy though. He cleared his throat and looked at Simon. Take my hand Simon told him and with that he went through the same door that Carrie had just gone through. He was met by his old manager Marie who had been a tough woman to deal with. They had had many altercations, but because of his persistence she had lost her job and he had become the CEO of the company. Marie smiled at Dan and offered her the gate to her eternity. It is a wonderful place, Dan she tried to convince him. The people are wonderful and you can finally ditch your cell phone and long hours at the office. Dan thought a minute. Will I see some of my co-workers later on? Is this area separated by class? How does that work? Marie knew what was to happen if she could not convince Dan to come into the heaven that she was holding the key to. Because of the problems that the two of them had had in life she had to convince him to enter here or she would have to follow him to the next gate. She was not sure what beheld them there, but knew that it was not a good alternative. Dan I promise you will be happy here. Marie almost begged. Dan thought for a moment and then said. No Marie I think that I will continue down this path. Marie bent her head down and started the walk towards the next gate. There they met a man named Sean who smiled as he opened the gate. With the silence of a crowd of 1,000 people Dan found himself on an airplane speaking to Simon. Simon smiled down at Dan and said, this plane has just crashed with no survivors. You will help these people cross over to their destination. It has been determined that you shall do it 1,000 times. Joe had been sitting there a nervous wreck ever since he had found out that he had actually died in a train crash. Oh he had always known that there was a chance that he could be killed during an accident, but trains were supposed to be safe now. He had not had time to make peace with his wife his bookie, his children. Oh, he had been a selfish self-centered man. He would do anything to fix the things he had done in life. When Simon looked at him and offered his hand he took it gingerly. He then walked to the door that he knew held his future and found himself in a dark dreary place with people shouting around him. He felt as though his whole body was being squeezed into a very tiny space and then plop he was being born again. As he looked around he rolled his eyes. Here I go again he thought. Simon looked down at the wreckage of that massive train. He had been lucky that day with only five deaths. But, he knew that there would soon be another assignment people were always dying he sighed. The people of the town mourned the lives of the people who had died on that fateful day. The tracks were cleared and another train took the old one's place. Each day another train would cross its tracks. There was a new conductor and life went on. 